To me, it's not that Donald Trump is winning so big in Iowa. That's not the story. It's that he's making it close in Minnesota. Minnesota is a reliable Democratic state. It votes Democrat in every presidential campaign. And poll after poll, I see Trump within two or three points in Minnesota. I don't think the media understands exactly what's going on right now. Yes, Trump dropped a few points after being found guilty on 34 felony accounts. But remember this, that would have destroyed any candidate as recently as 10 years ago. And the fact that Donald Trump is still even with, or in some cases leading Joe Biden after being found guilty of 34 felonies, oh my God, that is so significant. And one more point, I'm watching the independent vote. I don't believe that they're swinging back and forth between Trump and Biden. I think that they've decided that they hate both candidates, they hate both parties, and they're voting out of anger, out of desperation, out of resentment that this is where our political system has gotten. So be very careful in how you analyze what goes on from now through the debates, through the election, because I think there could be a hidden anger vote that surprises everyone on election day. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. CNN just got a brutal reality check about how the media has no clue what is going on when it comes to the surge in support for Trump. What is happening in these polls that at the swing state level, the ones that actually really matter, um, they're showing Trump absolutely dominating, okay? He is dominating across the board. And not only that, he's on the verge of flipping some other states that haven't been swing states or that we think lean blue for the most part, uh, he's on the verge of flipping those states red. The state that we've talked about before, Virginia, is a state that in some polls Trump is tied in. And there is uh, a good opportunity for Trump to make inroads in Virginia. But we have another state that in the last election cycle, really for the last 50 years, really has voted blue but they're on the verge of flipping red for Trump as well, too. And that is Minnesota, right? Minnesota is on the verge of flipping red after this bombshell poll comes out showing Trump is sweeping all swing states. So I want to go ahead and talk about it because um, at this point, right, if you're really paying attention to the polls that matter, the swing state polls, uh, it really is not looking good for Joe Biden, right? It, it looks like Trump is about to run away with this election if things continue to go uh, in the direction that they're going in. Former president and presumptive Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump got some good news on Thursday. One day after a Fox News poll suggested that he was down two points to President Joe Biden nationally. According to an Emerson College slash The Hill survey released on Thursday, Trump boasts lead over Biden in every major swing state, including Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, Georgia, and Nevada. What's more is that the same poll found that Trump has managed to tie Biden in Minnesota, which no Republican has won since Richard Nixon in 1972. Yeah, so what you have here is this one Fox News poll that showed that Biden was winning by two points in the popular vote. However, um, polls like that, again, they're going to happen, right? There are going to be some polls that are going to come out and show that, hey, Biden's winning, especially when it comes to the popular vote. However, for Trump, what really actually matters is the swing state polls that have been trending in his direction for a while, and they continue to do so. Notice how you're not getting any polls that are coming out showing that, hey, Biden is winning in all the swing states, right? You never get any of those polls, okay? The best case scenario for Biden is that he might win of Pennsylvania or Michigan, but he's losing all the other swing states, which is not enough for him to win. So this is why I don't really worry about polls that come out showing that Biden is winning in the popular vote because the popular vote doesn't really matter unless Trump is down more than three points, okay? Once Trump gets down more than three points in the popular vote, then yes, that is something to be concerned about. But as long as Trump is within Biden by at least two, he's fine. Right. Like he, he's basically winning at that point, because, again, Republicans don't need to win the popular vote, uh, considering how the map is set up. And again, what you can see here uh, is that uh, Trump is dominating in the polls that actually do matter, which are the swing state poll, which is why his chance of winning the election is 
steadily increasing. I mean, now it's at 60%, almost a 60% chance of Trump winning the election. Also, you have a great chance of Republicans taking back the Senate and keeping the House. Right now, we got a 59% chance that Donald Trump is going to win. It's pretty good. That's Which actually- is up. Which is up. It's up since since the verdict, actually, about right. four percentage points. So all that polling and all that news media, he has gone up slightly. On the Senate side, it's only gotten better um, for the Republicans there. They're at 80 percent chance to take the Senate and about a 60 percent chance to take the House. So right now, it's about a 40 percent chance we see a GOP trifecta this fall. Yeah, so you see now you heard that. Okay, that is the reality for the Biden administration and the Democrats. And we know that what we're seeing is true because the Biden campaign is panicking internally. I did a story about this yesterday where they are exiling uh, Democrat aides that push back against the strategy of Trump derangement, right? In the sense that the Biden administration doesn't want to talk about the real issues at all. They just want to talk about Trump in January 6 and a bunch of things that nobody actually really cares about because they know that if they actually talk about the issues that they are going to lose when it comes to that conversation. So again, they really, 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 really don't want to talk about that. In fact, they really don't want Biden to talk at all because every time he talks, uh, he shows his age. Okay. And that is the main issue that Democrats are reportedly worried about going into this debate with CNN in which Trump will be there. There will be no audience. Uh, mics will be cut. Uh, it will be an hour, 30 minutes of just Trump versus Biden. It will probably be the most watched debate in history. Uh, because we're going to see if Biden can hold up for 90 minutes straight without having a Mitch McConnell moment. And I've said this for months now, right? Months. Okay. Over half a year. I said, listen, one thing the Democrats want to avoid is Joe Biden having a Mitch McConnell moment on the national stage in a way that can't be explained away. The media can't say, oh, it's a cheap fake that the video was edited. And again, the CNN debate is the perfect, perfect place for something like that to happen to destroy Joe Biden, okay? And even people like Van Jones, who is a Democrat Party propagandist, uh, he is saying the exact same thing that I've been saying for months, okay? It's so funny how the media uh, starts to say things I've been saying <laughs> literally for the longest time now because uh, apparently they're not paying as much attention as I am. So I actually want to react to this clip of Van Jones uh, speaking on the debate and the fact that if Biden really slips up or if he has, again, a senior moment, a Mitch McConnell moment, then it's over for Biden and the Democrats. Well, I, mean, yeah. I, I just want to yeah. say that uh, I, I, I do think it's to Biden's uh, advantage because they keep acting like he's going to walk out there and you know, fall asleep or fall over. And so just the fact that he's, he's not going to do that, he is, he is sharp on policy. The big challenge that any sitting president has and remember, Obama had that problem in 2012. When you're president, you have a pretty big job every day. You're, you have a lot to do. You have a lot to manage. And most of the people you're talking to are people who are reporting to you. It's, it's unusual when you're president for somebody to come and just punch you in the head. And so remember the first Romney-Obama uh, debate in Colorado. Right. Uh, Obama, he, 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 he didn't have the moves. He didn't have that, that Muhammad Ali shuffle. He wasn't really Obama. He was this guy who had been in, you know, in the Oval Office for four years. And Romney cleaned his clock. Now, Obama came back the next time and set the record straight. But Biden's got two things working against him. One is the momentum is not there with him. But also, he's got a full-time job. All Trump's got to do is sit up in court, not fall asleep, and then go out there and say mean stuff about, about Biden. When you have a full-time job as demanding as the presidency and then have to turn on a dime and spend an hour and a half arguing with somebody who has no responsibilities, that is a tough mental turn for anybody, even a young guy like Obama. So we're going to see. But if Biden pulls that off, I think it will be impressive for that narrow slice of people who haven't already made up their mind. Yeah, well, here's the problem, Van Jones, is that you are comparing Biden to Obama. Biden is not <laughs> nearly, nearly as mentally sharp as obama was and again i'm not trying to necessarily praise obama i'm just saying like factually speaking biden's just he's just not there right so again you know i think that van jones has a point here in the sense that biden being sitting president uh yeah he definitely uh has other things on his plate like for example running the country however biden's not running the country okay like biden's being told what to do biden has took more vacations than any president in recent history so to act like Biden has so much to do while Trump doesn't have anything to do, I think is ridiculous. I think Trump actually is probably much busier than 
Joe Biden is, okay, because Joe Biden's not running anything. So Biden has plenty of time to prep, okay? Um, I feel like low-key, this is like a built-in excuse. But it's not like Biden is going to be able to come into this debate and have a real substantive conversation with Trump about issues because he's going to lose on the issues. In fact, this is why I think that the strategy from Trump actually really should be let Biden talk. Right. And everything that Trump says should be concise and controlled. OK, we don't need wild Trump unhands Trump in this debate. We really don't. We just need Trump to be concise on the policy, to compare and contrast the policy, the results, the outcomes, and to let Biden talk. Because the more you let Biden talk, he doesn't have a script. He doesn't have a teleprompter. He has to do it right off the top of the dome. No notes, right? Which I'm like, yo, who in the world thought this is a good idea for Joe Biden, right? To have a debate with no notes, okay? And he literally has to sit there and just talk for an hour and 30 minutes straight. Yeah, if he has to do that, it's bad. That is a bad situation for him. That's a good situation for Trump because Trump is used to doing that. All Trump has to do, again, is just stick to the policy and just stay controlled right that's all he has to do okay because they're looking for trump to be out of control they're looking for trump to be unhinged and they will point to that and say hey trump is unhinged see he can't be president of the united states because look at how he's handling himself on stage with joe biden and it won't be a good look for him to do that because again joe biden is elderly right he he looks fragile right frail and having trump up there uh railing against our old man it's just it's just not gonna be a good look so i mean i think that that's what trump is gonna do i think that's what the strategy is gonna be okay and um as long as he does that you know he, he'll be good right because if you just let biden talk everybody knows his policy suck just let him talk and the more he talks the greater chance that we have of him having a senior moment and he's gonna have to talk a lot right because again there's no audience there's no notes there's only like two commercials. It's 90 minutes. They don't get to huddle with uh, their team and to go over stuff and to, you know, game plan and strategize. No, no, no. <laughs> like Biden's going to have to make the adjustments all on his own. Again, I'm not entirely sure who thought this is a good format for Biden, but hey, we'll see. But here's the thing. The expectations for Joe Biden is super low. All he has to do is get through it without a senior moment. If he gets through it without a senior moment, um, th that honestly will probably help him out, okay? But it will only help him out so much because everybody knows that he is weak on the policy. And, and Van, how big of a moment is this for the president? I mean, I talked to folks this in the, the Biden world, Democratic Party, and they, they say this is a hugely important moment for the president. This, this, this is the entire election as far as I'm concerned. The entire world will be watching. There, if you have, if, if you are a carbon-based life form, you're going to be watching. If you've got a functioning brainstem, you're going to be watching. Because if Biden goes out there and messes up, it's game over. If, 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 he, if he walks out of there and a week later he's lower in the polls, it's panic in the party. But if he goes in there and he can handle himself against Donald Trump, a runaway train, a locomotive, a raging bull, then this guy deserves another shot to be president because that is tough. You couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. If you can stand toe to toe with a runaway train like Donald Trump for an hour and a half, you are fit to be president, period, point blank. This is the whole presidency in a bottle in a week. Yeah. So again, you see what Van Jones is doing here, right? They're lowering the expectations. Well, you can stand toe to toe with Trump. He's not going to stand toe to toe with Trump because there's absolutely no way Biden will be able to out debate Trump on the issues, right? That's not going to happen. So um, he's not going to stand toe to toe with Trump, right? What Van Jones actually really means is that, well, again, if you can get through this debate without having a major moment, then you stood up to Trump. Basically, if you do the bare minimum, right? You show up and you don't go to sleep um, and you just make it out, you know, you'll be good. Um, I personally think there's a good chance that that won't happen, that Biden is definitely going to have at least one major gaffe if not multiple major gaps. I mean, who knows if he will actually make it through the whole thing. I personally think the more that I'm really thinking about it, that these debate rules, I think they made a mistake in regards to how they set this up because there's going to be a lot of spotlight on Joe Biden, especially if Trump stays super controlled, very concise, and he just lets Biden talk. The more Biden talks, the worse he's going to appear. 
They've been hiding him in the media for a reason, for that very reason. The White House has been hiding him. He hasn't done much talking. He hasn't done too much of this before. And for him to do it now with this amount of pressure, with no momentum, yeah, I think that the election is going to come down to his bait as well, too, right? I think if, if Biden messes up, I, I think it's over, right? I think that you can stick a nail in the coffin of his campaign if he slips up in this debate. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.